Hello, my name is Brother Stephen Valletta, and I'm the Vocations Director for the Marianists, Province of Mariba, and I have with me two of my fellow Marianists, and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I'm Brother Andrew Santoriello. I teach freshman Spanish here at Chaminade. I'm Brother Richard Bukowski, and I teach sophomore religion. And for Vocations Awareness Week this year, we decided to invite two students to interview us. Believe it or not, we have not seen the questions in advance, so we can be as spontaneous as possible, and I'm going to toss it over to Jack and then to Austin, and they will introduce themselves. I'm Jack Muscatello. I'm a senior. I'm Austin Rincon, and I'm a uh, freshman. Just to kind of begin, when you first decided to become a brother and you made that transition to life here, what was that adjustment like from being a teenager and here, if it was later on in life, and now living in the brother's house? The biggest thing, I think, for me was adjusting to losing a little bit of, well, not losing, but changing a little bit of my idea of my independence. Um, so thinking less about um, myself as an individual and starting to try and adjust to myself as part of a community. Are you guys only allowed to wear black suits or are you allowed to wear other clothing? <laughs> um, the way the community does it is for morning exercises, for morning prayer, we would wear the habit, and then we would wear the habit when we do anything formal, official, as a brother in school or visiting or something like that. But then the rest of the time, we would wear what you guys would call normal clothes, <laughs> regular, regular clothes. The habit is like a sign to people to remind people of the value of religious life because uh, you know one of the important values of religious life is witness value you know we're witnessing to the gospel we're witnessing to Jesus Christ and to his blessed mother so especially when we're in public forums you know teaching or meeting parents or perhaps you know a diocesan mass or, or prayer event that's when we would wear the habit because it says we are professed religious who are trying to live the life of the gospel. The question I get sometimes is, brother, you run the hiking club. Do you wear the habit for hiking? No, I wear whatever you know a hiker, a typical hiker wears. So I guess to kind of go more into like the daily life, um, is there like leadership roles amongst you? Or is it kind of like a more fluid, I guess, structure? More of a, uh, to, to help you mm -hmm. uh, live the life that we're living. Right. They give it a little bit of an organization structure. There's a word that's being used a lot these days to describe religious community, and the word is intentional. Hmm. So everything we do is intentional, again, to make sure that we're living according to the values that we say we want to live according to. You know, it's easy to slip away from those values if you let nature take its course. Um, so it's an intentional community. It's not a haphazard community. Hmm. And that's the reason for the schedule that we talked about. And that's the reason for leadership roles. So there is, for example, there's a superior general and his council for the Marianists in Rome. Then each region of the world is called a province. And we have a provincial, Brother Timothy, who is, uh, supervises all the Marianist activities on Long Island and oversees Kellenberg Memorial at St. Martin de Porres and Shawanon High School and all our tree houses. And then we have local directors of each community, and, and, and each director has a community council. And, um, you know, it's, it's not like an authority thing. I, I don't think the brothers are afraid of the director. <laughs> um, no. But, no. you know, it's not like a, the director is lording authority over the other brothers, but he is there as a guide and someone to coordinate. You know, yes, in our community, we have 17 people. So you need someone to coordinate the efforts of all those people. Right. And mutual support for one another too. You know, the director often becomes the person that a brother might go to if he's experiencing some rough spots in his life and, and needs some guidance and needs some support. So what's your favorite thing about being a brother? Oh my, I would say, I have a lot of things, okay? But one of them is um, that we are a group of men that come together to pray. Uh, prayer in chapel, um, to me, is a, a, a very important thing. Or the fact that we could have uh, the Eucharist every morning, Mass, 
to me, that's a, a very, very important uh, thing. And it's a wonderful, for me, it's a wonderful day, way to start each day that way. But then I would say later on, our meals together, sharing the day, because during the day, we're all teaching, okay? We're all in school. We need, sometimes we don't see a brother for the whole day. So you don't see the brother until later on. Uh, let's say, uh, obviously we have breakfast after uh, morning prayer, but then we don't see the brother until dinner. And I find the, the time at dinner, just sharing stories of the day for me is, is an incredible blessing and a wonderful experience. I would have to agree, the community, my fellow brothers. You know, in the New Testament, when the first Christian disciples formed communities, it said the brothers were of one heart and one mind. Now, no group of human beings is ever of one heart and one mind. Are there disagreements? Are there tensions? Sure. But this is the really important thing. Uh, we are like a family, and we do support one another. Okay. Um, just a bit kind of something I've always been wondering is um, between the retreat houses Mariba and Founders and also here, what's your favorite spot to be in if you could choose? Oh my God. <laughs> I, I want to I wanna, I wanna comment on that. I, 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 for me, Founders Hollow is hands down my favorite place. And the main reason is because it's sort of out in the country. I'm a very, uh, a very much a nature person. I love the outdoors. I love uh, nature, and the, for me, Founders Hollow, that's what it is, okay? And I also love going there, not just for the nature, but also to see kids' expressions, kids' um, reactions, especially when they go there for the first time, to encounter the place, to see it, to, to give them a tour of the property, uh, to go to uh, 15 minutes away is a, a Shoten Reservoir. To, go, to show them that, to me, is, is such a blessing to be able to do that. And so, as the brothers will tell you, I try to be up there as much as possible. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've known all three places, granted not the brothers' residence here, but uh, since my time as a student, we had both of the retreat houses, um, and both of them were incredible although I didn't realize it at the time, both of them were incredibly influential on my decision to become a brother. Um, the retreats there and the time spending spent with the brothers and other teachers outside of the classroom got me to see them as, you know, in a relationship, see them as people. Um, and it really improved my experience of them in the classroom. So for me, I would make the distinction the community here is my home. This is, I, I, I definitely feel at home here, but I love the fact that we have the opportunity to go to Mariba and to Founders Hollow, which I will admit, like Brother Riz, is a, a preference of mine between the two retreat houses, but um, to have that ability to go either, if we go as brothers, um, on just a retreat with the community or um, when we have the opportunity to bring students to sort of share that experience outside of the school and um, I, because it was so influential for me I, I it really makes it makes what we do in the school feel more important to be able to share that time um, outside of the classroom as well. How did your experience as being a student at a Marianist school uh, influenced your decision on becoming a brother? Wow, for me, it was absolutely central. Um, when I came to Chaminade, um, I very, very quickly um, saw what the brothers were doing. I saw the camaraderie among the brothers. And I'm gonna say that was absolutely the number one reason why I first thought of becoming a brother, because of that. I saw um, like on weekends what some of the things that the brothers were doing, and I got involved in what at that time was the, the service club. It's sort of like the equivalent of our Emmaus today. 
and I got very involved with it. I uh, went on weekends to work at Mariba at that time. I got involved with many other um, activities and the school through that, working with the brothers, and that greatly uh, encouraged my uh, vocation. Um, and that's what really was the start of me thinking of becoming a brother actually. As a freshman, I was very nervous, extremely self-conscious in a fearful kind of way. Um, ran home at three o'clock on the three o'clock bus every single day. I rarely stayed after school to participate in after school activities. I, I, I got high grades, but I was not having fun. I was kind of miserable. But then some of the brothers and, and priests asked me to get involved in activities, and I did them. For, for whatever reason, I can't quite put my finger on it, but for whatever reason, I decided to accept that invitation, and that just turned my whole life around. So from someone who never stayed after school, I was now always staying after school, and my self-confidence grew enormously. And I feel my self-confidence grew because I was in an environment where my teachers cared about me, accepted me, um, supported me, encouraged me. And as I say, I was, I was extreme. No, I don't think anybody who meets me now would call me timid um, <laughs> or low key or anything like that. But I was really very, very timid as a freshman. And by a senior, I think senior year, I was quite confident. Maybe some would say too self-confident, but <laughs> need to be knocked down a peg, but I grew in an appreciate in, in, in self-love, not in a negative way, but in, in self-acceptance mm -hmm. here. And again, that was something, I think that's a holy thing. I mean, I, for my students, that's what I would hope is happening, that they would discover here that they are known and loved. Right. Absolutely. You know, by the faculty, by the brothers in particular, uh, by their fellow students, and most importantly, that they're God, by God. You know, that they're known and loved. And, and I think as educators, that's what our mission is all about, as Marianist educators. Thank you for answering our questions. And, and thank you guys for, you know, asking us the questions and hosting us here today and providing a very interesting format, I think, for talking about Marion's vocations. Thanks to my fellow brothers, Brother Andrew and Brother Riz. And thanks to all of you during this National Vocations Awareness Week for taking the time to think about a religious vocation. You know, every one of us has a vocation in one way or another. We are all being called by God. God is calling some of us to fatherhood. God is calling us, some of us to various roles in the different professions, law, medicine, business. And perhaps God is calling some of you who are listening to me today, listening to us today, to the priesthood or to the religious life. So if you find that in your heart, you have that burning question, am I being called to be a brother? Am I being called to, a, to be a priest? Uh, that, you, that you listen to that voice in your heart. Uh, you, you take time to think about the question. Don't be afraid of it. It's easy to be afraid of that question. But entertain the question, think about it. Perhaps when you get confidence, talk to someone that you trust, one of the brothers or priests whom you trust about that vocation question so that you can find out whatever it is in your life, how is God calling me and how can I respond? So thank you very much and God bless you all. Let us pray. We gather in prayer before you, Lord, for an increase in vocations, both to the priesthood and to the consecrated life. We ask you and your blessed mother to inspire young people to join with the Marianists in the mission of bringing all souls to Christ. May the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be glorified in all places through the Immaculate Virgin Mary, amen.